Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Crossing Past Television Ministry from Hermitage, Pennsylvania. My name is Don Reed Sr. My wife's here today, too, and she's going to do a little interviewing, too, with our guest. And we are so excited because our school systems today are being attacked. And we have two teachers that have been in the school system and not afraid to talk about Jesus. Amen. And I'm just so, I just love it. And they smile and they're, they're, really ready to tell the world you know and it, that's what this bible is all about people you're looking at a man 42 mm -hmm. years ago that was in las vegas throwing dice and committing adultery and drinking and gambling and god's got a hold of me and thank god i'm here today to tell you that jesus is real Amen. so call somebody and maybe you're a school teacher yourself or some kids that maybe you know these two here and uh, joyce is going to introduce our guest mm -hmm. here we're on here, I guess it's Cornerstone Television. We're on 35 states, about uh, maybe a couple hundred uh, uh, cable companies, I don't know. We're on Dish, we're on DirecTV, and all we spend about one minute in asking for money. And that is if you could be one of our monthly partners at $7 a month or a first one check at $77, I'm not talking about the ones that already support us. We need some more people to continue on supporting us. Or you want to give 700, 7,000, any number with seven, we'd be perfect. Or anything at all, we appreciate it. And that's my uh, asking for funds today because God's got me here and we're here every day. We go by Matthew 634, take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow will take thought for itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil. In other words, live one day at a time. Amen. Joyce, who do we have today? Well, <laughs> our dear friend, Jay Ann Melichek, has been telling me about her friend, Christine, <laughs> that she works with at the Pre-Kids Learning Center in Newcastle, Pennsylvania, right? And she kept saying to us, Dawn, remember, you got to hear this testimony this young lady has. And so, really, without further ado, Christine Rerick, we want to introduce you to our audience. And I know you have a wonderful testimony. Just the few minutes that you shared with me before this program started had me in tears. Don't do that again. <laughs> well, I'll try not to. Uh, I just yes, want to yes. But I, want I know it. God has blessed you, and you are going to be a blessing to somebody out there. There's somebody I know watching this show that needs to hear what you have to say, darling. Mm. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what God's done in your life, please. Where were you born and raised and so yes. forth, go ahead. I lived in Newcastle all of my life and I have a husband, uh, Bob, and I have three children that are grown. Mm -hmm. One's 28, one's 26, and one's 22. Oh. And so my story begins when I was six years old. My dad died of a massive heart attack. Mm -hmm. And oh. so my mother raised us at that time. My dad had taken us to church. And so even as a little girl, I can remember going into a church and mm -hmm. just kneeling and praying. And his, my nickname was Bubbles back then because I always <laughs> smiled. And to this oh. day, I still smile a, lo oh. smile a lot. Well, that's um, good. <laughs> and so he, uh, we would pray. And I would just pray about simple things in my life. But after he passed away, there was just, I, I longed for the love of, of a father figure, uh, the mm -hmm. love of just knowing what, what that was like all through my life, especially when, when children would say that they had a father or Father's Day would come around or different occasions mm -hmm. would come around. I didn't know what that was like. And I thought um, through mm -hmm. life I would find that in dating uh, different people. And they'd come and they'd go, and that just didn't work out. And then I met my husband, and we were engaged. And through his job that he got, 
before we were to be married, we had to go to Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And that was like, I thought that was love. <laughs> Him being there for me. And then he had to go to Cleveland. And I thought, wow, what, what's going on here? <laughs> love, love is that person stays with you. They don't go away. And, and not having anybody to really trust in or to have a foundation on which to stand at that time, I was devastated. I began to worry and I was calling him. Of course, he can't talk to me because it's his job. And his mom, Harry, uh, Harry and Jean Rarick, invited me over for Valentine's Day dinner. And after the dinner, Jean took me into the living room and she said to me, would you like to know about the love of God? And I said, yes. And she said, would you like to know how much he loves you? And I said, absolutely. And so she's the one that led me to God and to the awesome love that he had for me. And from that time on, I knew what the love of God was. How old were you then? At that time, I was probably 20, 23. At that time. Is that when you become born again, according to John 3.3 3 mm -hmm. and 1 Peter 1, 1.23? Yes, it was. Now, you never heard that before, probably, as far as John being born again, right? Right, right. A actually, I heard born again believers, and I was like, oh, they're, they're religious. They're, I, d I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't know what that is. And, yeah. you know, it was a scary thing for me because I didn't come from that background. Yeah. And I came from a background where it was a lot of works. And so yeah. I thought I had to somehow earn Right. that love of God. And yeah. I was still in that mentality of earning it. And when I, when I heard that I didn't have to earn it, that right. God just loved me, what an amazing thing it was for me. That's a big mistake a lot of people work. They cannot believe that salvation is a free gift. Yes. They think we have to, well, everything in this life, you have to do something to earn it. But God gives us the free gift of salvation, eternal life in him, doesn't he? Yes, he That's does. Free. That's a freebie. <laughs> yes. And it was shortly after that we were married and we had our first child. And things were going well. My husband was away. We were in Indiana at that time we were living. And I, we didn't have family and we really didn't have support. But I was not well. I was not well mentally from a mental standpoint. And so they sent me to doctors to try to figure out what's going on. Some were saying anxiety, maybe depression, but I continued to spiral out of control to the point where I ended up in a mental hospital. Hmm. And they had my husband, my daughter went with my, hus my family and my husband's family. I was there for a long time. Mm. In fact, they labeled me mentally insane at that time. And it got bit to the point where I'd been there so long that they said to my husband, the insurance has run out. There's nothing, no longer we can do. In my case, I believe they wanted to label it postpartum depression. I believe they didn't know what it was. And can I tell you something? Did I hear voices? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Was I mentally insane? You better believe I was. Mm -hmm. But did my spirit know mm -hmm. that there was a God during that time? Mm -hmm. Yes, it did. My, I'll never forget, my husband came that, that last day, and he said to me, you know what? They don't have a room for you. They told me to either put you away or take you home. I've come to take you home because I believe in the power of God. You must be a good husband, huh? Oh my gosh, yes. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be healed and we're going to see you well again. Amen. And I said, I'm coming home with you. In everything that we went through, we went home. And can I tell you, it was the power and the word of God living, dwelling inside of me mm -hmm. that made me well. And you know, through it all, when people came mm -hmm. together, Bob was very cautious of the people that surrounded me. He didn't want people to pity me. He didn't want people 
to really sympathize what, with me. What he wanted was people that believed in the word of God, Amen. that knew the word of God and believed that that word was true. So that when someone called and talked to me on the phone, it was, I believe in the name of Jesus that Amen. you're healed. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, right. but of power and love and a sound mind. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. So that word just permeated and was fulfilled in my life. And even though there were things in my mind that I was sick, my spirit longed to hear that word and what people had to say. And through it all, I could remember, I was telling Joyce, I, I would get up in the morning and I would say, greater is he that lives in me than he that's in this world. And my mind would be swirling. I would, I would try to read the Bible. Were you doing that during the mental, when you were in the mental institute? Um, I, you know what? They didn't allow you to have Bibles there. Oh dear. And so they would ask me, am I hearing voices? And I would go, no, I'm not hearing any voices, not at all. But they knew that I was, but I would try to read the Bible, but I just couldn't mentally focus enough to get my mind. So when you come out of the mental institute, you started reading the Bible just like that, or was it? No, it was, I, I couldn't comprehend enough, but through my husband reading it, I'd lay at night and my husband would have that Bible over me would, would take the Bible and open it, and he would pray, mm -hmm. may you come to know and understand the power and the love mm -hmm. that God has for you. May you come to know and understand the height, the depth and breadth and length of mm -hmm. this love. May you come to know and e experience the love that God has for you today. He would pray that word over me, mm -hmm. morning, noon, and night. He would say to me even, you know what, here's a DVD. I want you to sit down and listen to it, and I'd say, Bob, I can't, I just, I just can't. And he'd say, I don't care if it's for a minute or two minutes, just listen to a little word from it. And I would get a little mm -hmm. word from that, from that listening to it. And it would just transform my mind because what I was doing was mm -hmm. taking that power of that word that I was hearing and it was overcoming those thoughts that were in my mind till eventually what happened I'm healed, yes. I'm whole. And so what I was labeled as and what people are labeled as today, yes. I want them to know God does not label you other than loved, right. fully um, accepted, mm -hmm. righteous in his sight. He doesn't mm -hmm. see those labels and, and you can mm -hmm. become healed no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and back then with mental illness, people didn't want to deal with it. They, they, they were shying away from it. Some people were embarrassed mm -hmm. of, oh, you have mental illness. But, the, but, but what the truth of it was is it was a sickness of a mind. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was something that needed treated. And as Christians, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we don't want to admit we take medicine because, oh, then you don't have faith or there's something yeah. wrong that you're taking medicine. And, and People will say, you know, well, did you take medicine? Absolutely, I had to take medicine. That was part of my healing. That dealt with the symptoms that were going on in the sure, body sure. so that mm -hmm. I could deal with it from the spiritual set. Mm -hmm. It needed to quiet all the symptoms up here so that I could deal with it within my spirit. You told me a little while ago, you knew that God never left you. You knew that he did Absolutely. not leave. Okay. Elaborate on that just a little bit. That was so... I knew that I accepted Jesus Christ as right. my Lord and Savior. And I knew without a doubt that though my head was, was saying things and that in my mind it was a battle, I knew in my spirit, deep down within me, I knew I was saved. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a verse in Romans 8, I believe it's 37 through 39, and it says, we are more than conquerors Hallelujah. through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. For I am convinced okay. that neither life, nor mm -hmm. death, nor principalities, nor powers, nor angels or demons can separate us from the love that's found in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I stood on that verse. I thought, there's nothing that's gonna separate me 
from that love that God has for me. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that irregardless of what my mind would say at those times, I'm going to heaven. Amen. I'm a child of God. Wow. And I knew that even though there may have been a mind battle going on and I would hear a voice at times, those voices began to diminish and, mm -hmm. and I, I just knew that I was safe. And people said, well, how could you be born again and you go through mental illness? I can't explain it. Yes. I don't know why, but I, but I know who Jesus Christ yes. is. Jesus, Amen. the Lord didn't give up, that's why. that's why. Yeah, and I know what he did for me, and I know where I was and where he brought me through. You know, uh, Christine, sometimes is it, a lot of people have had childhood experiences or uh, problems with their mother and father in the background. Do you think that would have had anything to do with your ending up in the mental institute, you know what I'm saying? They they were abused, they were beat up, they had bad fathers, bad mothers. You don't think that would have anything to do for you ending up in the mental institute that you know of? Uh, not not that I know of. So you, you didn't have any alcohol or no get, drinking on problems or a lot of problems that a lot of people might have, right? Well, maybe no, the loss no. of your father scared you. You know, yeah. you were very young when your yes. father passed away. Yes. Yeah. And growing up in a house without a father. Now, I'm just asking sometimes. the medical questions a lot yeah. of people ask. Was sure. there any, any medical problems in your family? in your family, sisters or brothers like that, that had any problems like that? No. So, mm -hmm. so, so it's just that mm -hmm. God, God somehow chose you when you made that commitment to the Lord, right? Yes. And now you are here today trying to help somebody else. Absolutely. Showing that the mental problem can be cured yes. through doctors. And I'm, I want to emphasize that, through doctors, right? Yes. And the use of whatever the Word of God naturally and thank God with a wonderful husband of yours Amen. that stood by you during all these times, right? Absolutely. So how did you meet her before I tell you we get into the school? So how did you meet my little sister here? Uh, we, I went to work at Pre-K Kids Learning Center and I was chosen as the new teacher that was there. And when I walked in to there, they said I was gonna have an assistant teacher. And so the assistant teacher was Miss J here. And I had a sense in my spirit that she was a born again believer mm -hmm. just by the love and the words, mm -hmm. the character of her. And so I asked her and she said yes. And we began a, a bond that <laughs> Some sisters. <laughs> yeah, yep. maybe yep. Jayanne would like to tell a little bit how she yes. felt about you. Well, I could feel it too when uh -huh. we met uh -huh. and we started talking and mm -hmm. I asked her where she went to church and she told me and I told her where I went and uh -huh. um, I just said to her, I think I asked you one day, I said, uh, are you filled with the Spirit? Do you speak in tongues? And she said, oh yes. And I thought, wow, this is going to be amazing. <laughs> so we've been working together about about nine months. They, yeah. they yeah. even sneak and hold hands and pray in school, Don. Oh, <laughs> uh, I know that, but you, you, you're right now working with Crossing Pass Television Ministry yes. here and as one of our uh, counselors, right? Yes. And you worked for many, who was it? Benny Hinn Ministries. How many years did you Seven work? Seven years. Seven years. Mm -hmm. there, see, and somehow we crossed paths with us, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just wonderful, you know. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm just trying to get as much we only got so much time in here mm -hmm. that you, now that you're a school teacher, okay, and what grades are you teaching? It's Pre preschool. Kindergarten. So it's three, four, and five. Three, four, and five. And name of the school again in case somebody out there. Pre-K Kids. And, and where's that located? In Newcastle. Newcastle. On yeah. Elwood Road. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I suppose you have a lot of broken homes and kids that come in that you have to mm -hmm. love them and put yourself mm -hmm. where that you know, now that you've been through that, right? And you know, the bad part of it is that, that so many don't know the Bible out there that now that you've been conquered this through the Lord, this mental problem, okay? They probably say you are mental because you speak it in tongues, but anyways, I don't care whether you like that or not out there, but uh, that's not it, it's a gift. And you can still be saved without speaking in tongues. And then we got that very clear out there, you know, in this ministry anyways, you know, so forth. Now. How, do, how long did it take you to become a teacher? Because, you know, coming out of a mental institute, wouldn't they check your background sometime? And I'm not trying to be funny, but 
No, you know what? I uh, was a teacher be long before oh, that. Oh, okay, you were. Okay. Yes, yes. And so, well, now you have to do background checks and all that kind of stuff. And so when that comes up, it doesn't show that you, you have a mental illness. As a matter of fact, the reason that I'm, I'm here telling you is because it's, back then, it's HIPAA. And so nobody, it's not something that you go around and you can tell other people. Sure. But the reason that I'm saying it is, is because God has healed me from it. And it's such a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. And and with him doing that, my husband and I also did sidewalk Sunday school ministry. Uh, since then, we've gone into low income housing developments. We went to Tulsa, Oklahoma. We took our whole life savings and we bought a uh, sidewalk Sunday school ministry truck from Pastor Rod Baker, Victory. Oh, wow. And we went into low income housing in Lawrence and Beaver County. And I'm going on my fifth mission trip with my home church, which is Champion Life Church. What, what's the name of the church? Champion Life Church. It's in Chippewa. And mm -hmm. it's a mobile church. We're at Blackhawk High School. Okay. <laughs> if you could believe that, yeah. And Pastor Larry Bentcourt mm -hmm. is our pastor. And we're going on, I'm going on my fifth mission trip to Mexico. Wow. So Wonderful. with children, so. Yes. Have you ever had a chance to watch Crossing Paths TV ministry? Army? Yes, I did. Yes. And what do you think of it? Oh, <laughs> uh, it, you uh -oh. know what? It's amazing mm -hmm. the the opportunities and to hear how God has used other people to witness and to tell their stories to the the other people mm -hmm. that are out there mm -hmm. to let them know that they're not alone. Yes. That God can do amazing things in their lives yeah, and how a, God is we had here. Two weeks ago, we had a Baptist uh, minister on. He said he taped all of our shows. and <laughs> he, said, he said, I've been down many a times and I turn on Crossing Pass. He, uh, Crossing Pass uh, is not a church. We're to get the people out to the church. Right. That's, that's God, the mission God called me into, you know, and so forth. Mm -hmm. I'm, really excited when you say you're going to Mexico or whatever, right? So there's a lot of people that just are out there and they don't know what to do. And but if they just go to the Lord mm -hmm. and ask them, you know, you're never too old. And I mean, I, hate, I don't want to tell my age, but uh, or her age, but. Yeah, well, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, God is so real. He'll take anybody, whoever you are, and, and he'll use you. And the only way you have to be used is you have to get into the Word of God. You've got to stick to the Word of God, like she said. Mm -hmm. you know. So now once you really got baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, the Word of God become alive even more. Oh, my gosh, yes. 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 So you read the scriptures every day, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. And you stand on that Word every day. No matter what the circumstance or the situation mm -hmm. looks like, that's what faith is all about. Right. It's standing on that Word despite the circumstances or the situation. And you can't just say, you know what, I'm gonna try this faith thing for a day or two, because, <laughs> because that's hope, you know, and hope, hope doesn't work, it's that faith, it's standing on that word, irregardless of what the circumstances is, or the situation, or even the doctor's report, you know, it's and standing on that word in all you, things. Are you allowed to pray with the children, or you don't do that, or is it possible? You uh, watch me pray over a child, huh? yeah. I'll, I'll pray over a child. They may not hear me, but I'll pray right. with a child. Mm -hmm. If a child asks me about God, I'll tell them about okay, God. Okay, they you, right? Yes, okay. yes. Okay. And, and you told me a story about a girl that had questioned you on people yes. who commit suicide. Right. Tell a little bit of that story. Yeah, one minute, go ahead. Uh, we had our Sidewalk Sunday School ministry, and she had said to me, if someone tries to commit suicide, uh, does, does God forgive them and uh, love them? And I said, I want to tell you something. Yes, he yes, loves yes. them. But and you yes, know they're it was forgiven. Her that had tried. And we had known, mm -hmm. unbeknownst to her, we knew that it was her that tried to commit suicide. Wow. Yeah. Well, God leads. You talk about a variety of mm -hmm. programs. We sure do it here at Crossing Pass. And, mm -hmm. and Jay, I want to thank you for joining Crossing Pass. And thank you. Because it takes a lot of burden off of me. And uh, <laughs> there's Berta, and we have uh, Pat, and we have. Uh, a few other people answering the telephone. Mm -hmm. My wife, too. We get these letters, right, Joyce? Letters and, and phone calls and, and all kinds of good and stuff. And if you would like to write us a letter, why well, we appreciate it. And like I said, we don't spend much money asking for funds in this ministry, but it takes money to run a ministry. So 
if you could possibly put us on your seven dollars a month, seventy dollars a month, or seven hundred, like uh, Matt said, seven thousand, seven hundred. We don't care, but we need the help. We need the support. Our ministry has given away maybe forty to fifty thousand Bibles. We don't charge, we mail them to you. Mm -hmm. You want to send some money in and maybe you feel like you want to support somebody going to Mexico, you send a check here, we send 100% of the check to her. We don't, we don't take 10% of it or nothing. If you just designate it to that particular ministry, and what's the name of the ministry that we can make the check out to or to make it out? Champion Life Church. Champion Life Church, we can do that, you can do that. But I'm going to talk to you out there today. You say, well, I've done, I've done so many things that God will never forgive you. I mean, something you haven't done half what I've done. And I'm not, I don't like to talk about sin. But see, God's forgiven me. Mm -hmm. See, he took all my sins and put them over Niagara Falls, I call it, in a bushel basket, mm -hmm. and went into the sea of forgetf forgetfulness. Mm -hmm. And the next day, another basket, but it's not maybe as many. Mm -hmm. But see, Paul said, we die daily. And he said in Romans, says, I beseech you, brothers, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice Holy, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. And be not conformed to this word, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can renew your mind is through the word of God, not by going to church. You should. We have a telephone number on the screen with people standing by. 724-981-7777 or 1-855-981-9777. God loves you. We love you too, and tell somebody about Jesus. When you support Crossing Paths, you're helping to release the power of testimony. There's many people who know about God, but they don't know Him personally. They don't know His true nature, and they don't know His heart. The stories that we bring you each week testify to the power of God and to the love of God. Through these testimonies, people all over the country are getting to know the Lord and developing a hunger to know Him more. When that relationship becomes alive, it's clear to see that no person or no situation is too far gone for the power of God. I like to share with people that it's very important to know who you are in Christ because that day, if that was me laying there, I know that I would have missed uh, heaven. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame him, referring to the devil, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. God is still the same. He's still this, God's word is still the same. They say times are changing. Times are changing, but God is still the same. <laughs> it's, it's a no brainer for me. You don't have to have a doctor degree to know oh. that God is good. He loves sinners. He just does not like to sin. When you partner with Crossing Pass and sow a seed into this ministry, you are helping us get the power of the testimony and the gospel over the airwaves. This will help people understand better who God is and connect them to the plans He has for them. Please call us today and support this vision.